We begin with the story of a shadowy multimillionaire who has declared a holy war against the United States. To some in the Islamic world, he is a hero. To the United States government, though, he is a terrorist, a real threat to the lives of you. To the United States government, though, he is a terrorist, a real threat to the lives of U.S. troops. He is Osama bin Laden, and Impact's Peter Arnett takes us into his hideaway and into his mind with this first ever television interview. Amidst these remote mountains of Afghanistan are the various hiding places of one of the world's most wanted men, Osama bin Laden. We declared a jihad, a holy war, against the United States government because it is unjust, criminal and tyrannical. The U.S. State Department calls him one of the most significant financial sponsors of Islamic extremism in the world. Uh, he is a major terrorist financier, and with a large fortune of his own, he has bankrolled terrorist groups and individuals all over the world. The State Department links the 41-year-old bin Laden to Ramzi Youssef, alleged mastermind of the World Trade Center bombing, New York. An attempted bombing of U.S. troops in 1992, Yemen. Terrorist training camps in Sudan and Afghanistan. Islamic terrorist groups in Egypt and Algeria. Younger generation Islamic, especially those uh, Islamic fundamentalists, uh, they are looking for a hero. And Mr. Bin Laden fit the bill. In Western intelligence circles, bin Laden is best known for this document, a call for jihad or holy war against the thousands of U.S. soldiers now stationed in Saudi Arabia. That call to jihad came after two bombings of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia. The first in Riyadh in 1995, seven dead. The second in Dahran in 1996, 19 dead, hundreds injured. To support his holy war, sources estimate bin Laden has up to half a billion dollars. To execute the jihad, bin Laden has thousands of committed followers inside Saudi Arabia. They are either direct followers taking command, direct command and order from bin Laden, or they are small cells and groups who believe bin Laden is a good father. His, his, uh, his message is almost like a religious order. Most of those followers fought alongside bin Laden in an earlier jihad, the 1980s war in Afghanistan against the Soviet Union. Afghanistan drew thousands of volunteers like these from around the Islamic world. They learned how to handle weapons and explosives. They became known as the Afghan Arabs. Osama bin Laden left his comfortable life in Saudi Arabia to become a leader of the Afghan Arabs. Informed estimates put their numbers between 12,000 and 20,000 men. Bin Laden's victories against the Soviets were well publicized in Saudi Arabia. Because of that, a lot of people wanted to, to participate in jihad and, uh, and they, they, uh, they thought that Osama is an important figure. But he, he was not only willing to, um, to put his money, but he, he actually gone there himself and, uh, and fought himself and, and get hurt. After the Afghan war, bin Laden became disillusioned with the Saudi regime, deeming it insufficiently Islamic. He moved to Sudan. Five years later, under U.S. and Saudi pressure, bin Laden was expelled from Sudan. A year ago, bin Laden took refuge here in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is perhaps the only country in the world that will accept him. Our quest to meet bin Laden begins in Peshawar, Pakistan, and then across the Khyber Pass to Jalalabad, Afghanistan, where we wait for several days. Finally, bin Laden's media advisor arrives. We are allowed to take our lights and sound equipment, but not our camera. There have been assassination attempts against bin Laden, and his security force worries our camera might contain a tracking device that would give away his location. The interview will be conducted with their camera. 
As best as we can reconstruct it, this is the route that we took to meet bin Laden. We are put in a minivan with curtained windows and drive west. As night falls, we move to a four-wheel drive vehicle that makes its way up a rough mountain path past checkpoints manned by heavily armed men. We are searched and electronically scanned to ensure that we're not carrying a tracking device. About 5,000 feet up is a small hut. We are allowed about an hour and a half with bin Laden. We have submitted questions in advance. He agrees to answer most of them, but does not allow follow-up questions. Mr. bin Laden, you have declared a jihad against the United States. Can you tell us why? The U.S. government has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous and criminal through its support of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And we believe the U.S. is directly responsible for those killed in Palestine, Lebanon and Iraq. Due to its subordination to the Jews, the arrogance of the United States regime has reached the point that they occupied Arabia, the holiest place of the Muslims, who are more than a billion people in the world today. For this and other acts of aggression and injustice, we have declared jihad against the U.S. Is the jihad directed against the U.S. government uh, or United States troops in Arabia? What about? U.S. civilians in Arabia or the people of the United States. We have focused our declaration of jihad on striking at the U.S. soldiers inside Arabia, the country of the two holy places, Mecca and Medina. In our religion, it is not permissible for any non-Muslim to stay in Arabia. Therefore, even though American civilians are not targeted in our plan, they must leave. We do not guarantee their safety. When this guy delivers his statements uh, attacking the U.S. presence or his call for jihad, he is justifying these actions in very explicit Quranic Islamic terms. With a law, it's like a careful legal brief. The U.S. government charges bin Laden with supporting terrorist activities throughout the Middle East. The U.S. today has set a double standard, calling whoever goes against its injustice a terrorist. It wants to occupy our countries, steal our resources, impose agents on us to rule us, and then wants us to agree to all this. If we refuse to do so, it says we are terrorists. When Palestinian children throw stones against the Israeli occupation, the U.S. says they are terrorists. Whereas when Israel bombed the United Nations building in Lebanon, while it was full of children and women, the U.S. stopped any plan to condemn Israel. The U.S. government also points to bin Laden's circumstantial ties to terrorism within the United States. Mr. Bin Laden, if you had an opportunity to give a message to President Clinton, what would that message be? <coughs> Mentioning the name of Clinton provokes disgust and revulsion. The president has a heart that knows no words. A heart that kills hundreds of children definitely knows no words. Our people in Arabia will send him messages without words, because he does not understand words. If there is a message that I may send through you, I address the mothers of the American troops. To these mothers I say, if they are concerned for their sons, then let them object to the U.S. government's policy. But in Afghanistan, bin Laden is beyond the reach of U.S. law enforcement. The country is dominated by the Taliban a movement of religious students turned warriors who have imposed their harsh interpretation of Islam. The Taliban have recently declared that bin Laden is their guest, providing he does not attack other nations. But bin Laden may have other ideas. What are your future plans? You'll see them and hear about them in the media. God willing. <laughs>